And I'm thrilled to be on this sacred ground once again and have my feet, and I'm sure all of your feet, touch this very holy earth. I believe that the security of this country is to be built on economic and financial security. It's not only military, political security that we need. That means we need to today start thinking through all of the challenging questions that are involved in renewal, rebuilding this country. And that starts with investigating what the social contract is between our government and our citizenry. What is that relationship going to look like in the future? How are we going to improve upon our democracy, the democracy for which people are dying every day? How are we going to provide opportunity, economic opportunity for our people? How are we going to do this in a way that encourages as many of the 8 million refugees as possible to come home? That's our future labor force. We can't rebuild this country without our people. How are we going to do this in a way that assures we're doing it in alliance and in accordance with the standards of the European Union so that we're not facing chapters of a session having built things that are not in standard, meeting the standards of the European Union? And how do we do this in a green way? We have the opportunity to shed a Soviet legacy, a legacy of pollution, a legacy of housing that was built not for human beings but for automatons, steel that polluted our air and our rivers, our water, and it's been even more degraded by this horrific war. How do we build a green country? How do we plan this in such a way that we're not asking our colleagues, our friends in the West for, for donor money, but the private sector is running to our borders to be a part of what will be the largest, most significant reconstruction in our lifetimes and will be, I believe, the theater for the best practices globally. Best practices in urban design, best practices in green steel, best practices. This is a country that has proven its desire to live by best practices with its blood. And so I believe we can only secure our, we can only have that security in NATO we can only have that security in the world if we have our economic and our financial security. And that means working today to build that vision, to have the capacity to make that change real. But I'd like you to look at this vic Ukraine's victory through another set of eyes, through the eyes of the, the, the global economic system. All of the global economic trade and success post-World War II is based on an international system of rule of order, rule of law. Ukraine's victory ensures that that international system of rule of law and global order remains in place. Our global economy depends on this system being victorious, not a system of brute force. And for all of the countries to benefit from a system of rule of law and order, Ukraine must be victorious. And Ukraine's victory not only ensures that that system will continue functioning, but that its leadership in feeding the world, in providing for so many of the rare earth minerals that Ukraine has to offer in a world looking to go green, that Ukraine's role in that economy will be ever more critical, ever more important, and provide ever more economic benefit to the global economic system. Without Ukraine, that's not possible. We see that today in parts of Middle East and Africa. Without Ukrainian food, People starve to death. Entire nations starve. So Ukraine's victory is the victory of the global economic system, which has brought all of our countries, all of the democratic countries, such incredible growth and opportunity. And that's why investment in this rebuilding is so critical for those same countries and those same economic players. I believe that the time will come when NATO will want Ukraine to be a member will understand the value that Ukraine brings to NATO, the experience that Ukraine's military and this horrific war brings to NATO. What you said, sir, about your having practices about what the Ukrainian military is living through. I, I, I think, you know, for, for me, to be, to be perfectly frank, I can't wait for the day when NATO is asking Ukraine, please join. So that t for me, that's the day that I await.